Hello, student. Oh. I'm here with a concert violinist, Vivian Hoffman. She has something very interesting because after many years of experience starting very young on the violin, she's starting from scratch because she has turned around her violin and is going to play left-handed. Holy smoke, this is hard. As an experiment to start from scratch and test a method by her teacher, Ruggiero Ricci. Welcome, Vivian. Hello, Slater. How great of you to be here. Let's take a look at how you normally play. And here's how she sounds when she turns around the violin after one minute of playing left-handed. And this is after 10 minutes. And here is after one hour. Let's see if I can curl my fingers and bend my thumb. No, I can't. Okay. Uh, well, it's very interesting to have you here for this experiment. And uh, I loved watching your material. We will see uh, later in this interview also after 24 hours and after three days with some very surprising difficulties that showed up that you didn't uh, foresee for, uh, in, the, in the first place. Now, there might be people watching who are new to the violin and are thinking, but you know how to play, so why does it matter if you play right or left-handed? Can you explain why this is so difficult? Well, on the violin, both hands are doing two extremely different tasks. And if one's been playing the violin for this long, the hands are extremely specialized. Turning around, yes, I know how to play, but my hands don't. They just mm -hmm. don't know how to do it. They don't know how the movement is. They can't perform the movement because they have never done it. So actually knowing how to play makes it more difficult in a way because I can tell everything which is not working. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange feeling doing everything the other way around because I noticed that my hands just can't do it. They can't, uh, they can't reach. They can't reach the strings properly because I can't do this movement and certainly can't hold the bow properly and I can't keep my bow hold. My fourth finger slides off 
all the time. I'm glad if I can play three notes without it sliding off <laughs> because that fourth finger has never done that before. And uh, just for some perspective, uh, you've been playing the violin since a very young age. Uh, since which age have you been playing? I started when I was four. Wow. Yeah. So you don't really remember how it was as a beginner. So this is the, also discovering how your beginner students must, what they go through <laughs> yes. and uh, uh, what they feel. So I think as a teacher, it's also uh, um, a, a very great opportunity to to see exactly what's on the other side. Uh, when I was in the conservatory and at my methodology class, the first thing the teacher said is turn around your violin and that's how a beginner feels. <laughs> so, but you're taking it a step further. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiment and about uh, the method uh, of your teacher, Ricci, that you are um, testing, but also developing further? Yes, well, Roger Ricci developed a method from actually studying Paganini's compositions and studying paintings of Paganini, studying the few things we have of Paganini where he actually left his fingerings. Mm -hmm. And he developed a very special method for violin playing based on a chordal structure and based on chromatic glissando scales, which he says himself is not his method, but Paganini's method. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, used this method on myself, of course, because I'm a pupil of Ruggiero Ricci, but I developed it further to be suitable for beginners, because I remember Ricci always stressing this should be taught right from the beginning. People should learn mm. this right from the beginning. It's not supposed to be instead of the conventional way of learning the violin, but as well as the conventional way of learning the violin. And to test it, to really see, does this help a beginner? Is this helpful? Mm. That gave me the idea of turning myself into a beginner to find yeah. out if this really works. Yeah, yeah. And when you refer to this, the method, um, uh, I understand that it's it's focused on self-correcting and self-learning the violin. And when uh, people hear self-learning, they think without a teacher. But in fact, we are all self-learners on the violin because 99 of the time we spend outside of the lesson practicing. And we just have that one half of an hour or hour a week uh, that we actually see our teacher and that our teacher can correct us. But the rest of the time, even if you have weekly lessons, um, we are correcting ourselves. So it's, I think, the key of practicing what he describes. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. We have to be our own teacher. In fact, actually, he always said your ear is your teacher. Mm -hmm. So you have to develop your ear and your ear is your teacher. And what makes his method self-correcting, basically what it does is it makes it easier to teach oneself because some of the exercises um, sort out the hand position, for example, that one doesn't need a teacher to correct the left hand position because the exercise itself only functions if the left hand position is correct. Just as an example, if I put my fourth finger onto the A string, onto the fourth finger E and I have to put it I have to place it in a way that I can also play the open E string my fourth finger is automatically placed yeah. correctly so yeah. that's just one example of his oh, yeah. method and uh, that's basically it's just supposed to make teaching oneself easier because so much of it is self-correcting and it's fairly straightforward mm -hmm. yeah yeah because the E is either ringing or not Actually, yes. yeah, yeah. In this uh, in this uh, example, um, it, you mentioned that it's really hard, and I saw you're struggling in all the videos. But if we look at this, then um, uh, of course this is a progress that a, an absolute beginner can, of course, only dream of uh, after one hour. Yes, yes. Well, I am not a real beginner. For one mm. thing, I have a trained ear. The other yeah. thing is I know what to do. The yeah. third thing is that my hands are trained. So yeah. I don't have the difficulty of not being able to tell my hands to move in a certain direction because I have trained hands. So I'm not a real mm. beginner in that sense. But it yeah. is more difficult than I expected it to be. Also more painful. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you mentioned, and uh, perhaps we're going to look now at a one day, the 24 hours 
uh, uh, snippet. Uh, where you play the D major scale and twinkle twinkle again. Let's take a look at that. have you practiced in this 24 hours? Not as much as I wanted to. <laughs> I did a little bit of practicing. What mm -hmm. I was amazed at was that concentration was unbelievably difficult because mm -hmm. I'm used to practicing several hours a day. In fact, yeah. by now, I actually often find practicing relaxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, when I play left-handed, it was so strenuous for the brain that basically I need a break after five minutes. Sometimes yeah. I need a break even earlier because it hurts. Or I, I tense up so easily. Yeah. And uh, so I just did a little bit here and there just to yeah. remind my hands that we're playing this way around now. Yeah. But it wasn't very much practicing. I think uh, the fact that uh -huh. it was a day later that I slept over it once, I think that made yeah. quite a difference. Yeah. But yeah. It's very difficult to concentrate. Very, I found practicing very, very strenuous. Also, also difficult to concentrate, you say. So it's, it's taking more of your... Uh, it's asking mentally and, and physically more, yes. as I understand it. Yes, yeah. mentally as well. Physically didn't surprise me, but yeah. I was surprised that five minutes practicing and I had to, I, I couldn't think anymore. I couldn't concentrate on anything. Wow. Yeah, because the motor skills are developed in a different way. Yeah. And I can imagine that like a fourth finger that is used to the left hand fingering um, yeah. might slip off the bow, but does have the strength to make the right movement yes. but needs to be coordinated in, uh, in a, a different way. What do you find most difficult, intonation or bowing? Oh, that's a hard question. I think uh, subjectively speaking, I find intonation more difficult because I didn't expect that to be difficult because that was yeah. actually the one thing I thought, at least I have a trained ear. So at least yeah. that won't be a problem. But the strangest things happen. It seems that my brain is used to processing what it hears and bringing a sort of a correction speed going directly into my left hand. So what I notice when I hear that I play out of tune, when I'm playing the new way, the left-handed way, mm -hmm. not only is my finger not able to correct precisely enough, fast enough, but also it seems that my brain puts a motor output directly into the left hand, which means my bow wobbles every time I want to correct. Yeah. Yeah, it asks so much more focus than than the than the way you are uh, you you are are used to. So and 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 um, uh, how do you think that because you, are you right-handed naturally? Yes, yes, I'm very right-handed. Do I don't perform anything much with my left hand. I can't put <laughs> the key into a door with my left hand. It would take half an hour. So I'm very right-handed. Do you think that is? also influences this experiment that it's not only that you're not used to in that way and not trained to uh, but also that you don't have the natural inclination to play in the left-handed manner it could it could influence i think if i was left-handed perhaps it would be easier perhaps some bow technical aspects would be easier hard to tell but yeah, yes that yeah. could that could influence this project because what I'm thinking, I think people who watch this video or stumble upon this video uh, could be also watching it because they are left-handed, mm -hmm. um, want to play the violin, or maybe even have an injury like uh, uh, some of our students also in Bow Like a Pro, yeah. uh, have some kind of injury where it's not even possible to play the normal way, or they are just 
uh, have a left-handed inclination. And I know that there are teachers who uh, have put students on, in the left-handed way and they made more progress because yeah, they, they are dominantly left-handed and then it's easier to uh, play the bow arm with the, with the left, left hand. How do you see that to start left-handed? It was quite interesting in uh, all the years or decades by now that I've been teaching, I've had a surprisingly high amount of left-handed pupils. It's like in my class, I've nearly always had at least one or two left-handed pupils, but they play the normal way around. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. had many left-handed beginners. I could never tell that they had more difficulties with okay. bow technique, for example, uh, when I started noticing that I had an unusual number of left-handed students, I started observing them more closely because I was okay. interested to see if it was more difficult for them. I couldn't notice anything. Okay. Definitely, of course, anybody who has an injury or feels hmm. that uh, it would be better that way, it would make sense to play left-handed or anybody who just, who's starting out and tries both ways. And yeah finds one way preferable from the start, I would say don't make your life more difficult than it is. Violent playing is difficult enough. If it yeah, yeah. seems more natural, why not? The only yeah. place where one could wind up with a problem would be in an orchestra. Yeah, yeah, that you're poking someone's eyes out <laughs> with a <the> bow <laughs> because it's going into a different direction. So it, yeah, I always tell that to people. I've worked in a violin shop for um, uh, for a long time, and uh, so I always say that to people that that you can start left-handed. I can sell you a left-handed violin, uh, but yeah, if you want to join an orchestra, you might have a problem. And uh, um, yeah, so and, and what instrument are you using for this uh, experiment? Because you have uh, put the strings on uh, in. Uh, you've swapped around the strings, I think. So you're still have you still have the E string on the inside, so to say. Yes. Um, did you did you do other adjustments to the instrument you're using? I turned the bridge around, mm -hmm. and so yeah. that the bridge stands properly, I had to file the feet a little bit. Oh yeah. Because yeah. that's so important. I mean, not that I'm capable of making any good sound, but uh, at, at this stage, I talked to my violin maker about this whole project. And okay. after several discussions, we came to the conclusion that the best way is just to start by turning the bridge around. And he mentioned I can file the feet down a little bit mm -hmm. in some places so that it stands properly. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the next step would, of course, be to have the bass bar put on the other side and the sound yeah. post and the next mm -hmm. thing that was something I didn't even know even the fingerboard isn't exactly symmetrical it yeah. curves similar yeah. to the bow I didn't know that so that would yeah. then be the step after that so we're going to go in stages as I move okay. along because I figured yeah. at the beginning I'm not going to be needing a perfect sounding violin anyway because I can't make a sound and I, I can't do sound production properly. So just to get started, the bridge was enough. I'll have him build me a bridge in within the next couple of months, especially okay. for this yeah. violin, because mm -hmm. the bridge is also not symmetrical, even if you turn it around. Yeah, this exactly. Yeah, inter interim right now. So I'm going to be doing this in several stages, turning the violin into a left-handed violin in several yeah. stages. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 alongside you being <laughs> uh, uh, turned around in, the, in, in several <laughs> stages. What I was wondering, because I, I tried it today for, for two seconds, because I was telling my husband, I'm interviewing someone, and she's playing the other way around, so kind of shrugged his shoulders, because it's <laughs> for him not interesting, as he's not a musician, he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we find it all very interesting. Um, and so, so I turned it around. And what I noticed is, of course, I was a complete beginner. And, and it was exactly like, like the adult beginners that I've taught. And, uh, but what I also noticed is when I turned it, because I did it in between practicing. And when I played normally again, my brain was like, wah! <laughs> yes. Do you notice uh, a difference when you, because I assume that you still practice right-handed on your mm -hmm. other violin? Do you notice some difference there? 
I haven't yet. The one thing that I did notice was that I, after I did the uh, one minute, ten minute, one hour thing, I had an unbelievable desire to just play, to just play the fiddle, because yeah. it was such a struggle. So I, I took my vow and I just played something just to play. Yeah. I don't remember when I last felt quite such a strong uh, desire to pick up the violin and just play something, anything. So I am very curious what it will do to my violin playing over the next oh. months or even years. This is a long-term project. I want to see how, yeah. how far I get. I want to see how advanced I can get playing the yeah. other way around. <laughs> right now, I can't imagine ever being able to play anything, but... So this is a long-term project, so I'm very interested what that yeah. will do to my to my normal playing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, in in uh, I can imagine that training the hands to be a left hand, for example, can influence perhaps the the uh, the, the finger independence in in the bow hand, for example. It could. Uh, for, uh, and maybe the other way around. And uh, in terms of progress, of course, when we saw the one day video, you had more bow flow. Uh, tone quality was much better, and uh, the coordination mainly between left and right had dramatically improved. Uh, you didn't have to stop the bow every time, like like we saw in the in the one hour. After one day, you could kind of make seamless bow changes. It was only that the pinky wasn't staying on the bow. And I would say the tone quality is um, after one day is something that a beginner after one year can't really reach. So I'm really curious if the progress will be. Yeah, like this, linear, or if it will be like this, that there are skills that just ask an amount of hours that we just have to put in, whether you know how to do it or not. So, so um, shall we look at the three-day uh, progress? <laughs> Now you started playing double stops and you also noticed something about the intonation. Can you, can you guide us a little bit through what you experienced in that, uh, in, in that third day? I noticed about the intonation that the correction speed, which is what we violinists always work on, I've come to rely on it so much that very often when I play the normal way, I only realize a note was not in tune after I've corrected it. The whole correction is automatic. And yeah. my finger knows how much to correct in what direction. And all of that goes unbelievably fast. It goes faster than I consciously notice that I'm doing yeah. that. As soon yeah. as I play the other way around, it's impossible to correct mm -hmm. because yeah. neither does my finger know how much to adjust because sometimes one just has to adjust a little bit and sometimes it's more my finger doesn't yeah. know that it goes backwards yeah. and forwards to sharp to flat to sharp to uh, flat to sharp to flat yeah it drives Searching. Me crazy yeah very very yeah. difficult yeah because that idea of okay i hear this and i know it should be there and the finger automatically knows how to get from a to b yes and now it doesn't i think no no, not at all. So, I think it just doesn't react at all to uh, uh, anything that I hear. My left hand reacts 
to yeah. an out of tune note. That's why yeah. the bow wobbles, which I have ah, to see. Ah, so oh, I, I, I didn't understand that. So the bow wobbles because the left hand wants to correct yes. something. Because yes. I first thought that it was because the right hand then is, you're busy with the right hand, so your bow goes out of control. But it's because that left hand actually wants to do something yes. about, I sometimes have this in, in, in concerts, if something's out of tune, that I feel like I'm, I think every musician feels that some kind of an itch or what you have with <laughs> with a, with a student if they are out of tune that you want yes. to do something physical about it but you can't. <laughs> yes, it seems like the intonation correction for us professional musicians seem to, seems to after many years be directly connected with uh, motor output because yeah. I've had that when teaching as well that my when a student plays out of tune with my left hand jerks a little yeah. bit <laughs> and now I'm having it when I'm playing this way around trouble is the oh, left wow. hand is holding the bow which so that's an entirely new problem yes and it was something I did not expect at all yeah 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 wow yeah 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 because only now I understand it and uh yeah yeah it's 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 very interesting and after these three days um what are your takeaways as a teacher because i can imagine that um and this is still a secret but i started playing a new instrument and uh, i know all the things i tell beginning students like you need to be patient and it will come and that kind of all the encouraging words <laughs> <laughs> well, if you tell those words to yourself, you're like, what? No, it's not working and it's not going fast enough. And I know all those. I had a whole dialogue that I normally have with a beginning student that was going on inside my uh, head. And, and what was it for you, too, that you're uh, gaining more and more understanding in the beginning student or in, in even an intermediate student who is progressing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been having these dialogues since I did the first one minute video because it is actually quite a tough undertaking. So I do have to yeah. keep on motivating myself. Come yeah. on, this is this is too interesting to stop. And uh, the, exactly these same dialogues and also telling students, look, this is going to take time. Be patient. Yeah. Take small steps. Yeah. All of that. I have be happy and, with every little progress. Yes, yes, <laughs> <No>! yes. <laughs> exactly. And I have to say, I mean, the advantage that I have is that I know how it's supposed to feel. For example, if I play with a bow, I know how it's supposed to feel in the hand, how the 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 string and the bow head, the bow, how it's supposed to feel. So that's a huge advantage. Yeah. But I must say. I'm already noticing in my teaching that uh, this is going into my teaching that I think I explain some things a bit more carefully or a bit more detailed because I know how hard it is. And I must say, I always had tremendous respect for particularly adult beginners yeah. because it is so unbelievably difficult. But yeah. that has grown so much. I mean, anybody yeah. who decides to pick up this instrument and to learn how to play yeah. this instrument, regardless of how far they get, just the very fact that they are doing it deserves just so much respect. It was so easy for us learning it as a child. Yeah, because as a child, you don't care if, if it's out of tune or if something's not, you're not struggling that much. I, I can't remember myself struggling a lot uh, mm -hmm. with learning the instrument as a beginner. I was just having fun and uh, I admired my teachers, and uh, but I also didn't wasn't frustrated about the fact that my teacher sounded great and everything looked easy, and I wasn't there because it was like, yeah, when I grow up, I will be there. Yeah, well, that's the thing. As a child, one's used to not being able to do something. I couldn't ride a bicycle at first, and then I learned. Yeah. So one is used to not being able to do something and learning yeah. something, and then of course all the joints are much softer. Yeah, with children. Exactly. So, like, what I find particularly uncomfortable and painful is this. Yeah. You know, the the string. I'm calling it string hand because if I start talking about left and right exactly. hand, we will yeah, go crazy. Uh, we mix it up. Yeah. So the string. This is it's so difficult. But I know from having taught small children myself, it's not such a big deal for them because it's all soft. Yeah. It's it, exactly. It, you can just shape it, and it's it's yeah. like, almost like clay or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it, it's sometimes even because of that reason too weak and hard for them to to 
kind of have a consistent uh, hold and a consistent uh, intonation. Yes. So um, very interesting. Uh, what what are your next steps? Because you were doing double stops. Are there? What's your strategy from now? What are you going to practice? Let's say in the next weeks or months. Well, my strategy now, after I've done a little bit of this playing this way around, is uh, first of all, what I noticed was that what I was doing is actually too difficult for me because mm -hmm. I can't really influence the sound or the intonation, not the way I would like to. So I just play kind of by instinct, but I can't do very much about it. So yeah. I'm going to go about it a lot more structured. I'm going to separate mm -hmm. the hands. I'm going to work mm -hmm. just at the string hand so that it's able to perform the motor skill that is necessary. And at the same time, work at intonation, but I'm not going to do that with a bow. I'm going to do that pizzicato so that I can concentrate mm -hmm. 100% yeah. on that. And don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the bow. I'm going to be doing yeah. a lot of double stops that way because double stops are self-correcting. Left hand yeah. pizzicato or rather string hand pizzicato is self-correcting. It strengthens mm -hmm. the fingers. It makes them independent from each other. Yeah. And it's self-correct the hand position and double stops do exactly the same. And double stops are perfect for intonation practicing because yeah. they train the ear. I think to a certain extent, I have to retrain the ear, brain, motor output connection. Uh -huh. Yeah. And yeah. the same with the, with the bow, I'm going to be practicing just open strings until yeah. I can actually really do it like I don't know if you notice because I can't do the finger motion yes I use yes. my wrist instead yeah. and so I really want to try to get to playing with flat knuckles and the uh -huh. the finger motion what I'm yeah. also going to be doing is I'm going to be playing on two strings nearly all the time because this is also something I learned from Ricci if you play on one string you have a certain amount of leeway with your bow in both directions before you hit another string. If yep. you play on two strings, you don't. Yep. Any, any wobbles, you hear immediately. Yes. But on yep. the other hand, playing on two strings, the bow is more stable. Yeah. There's more stability. So yep. I'm going yep. to be experimenting with playing on two strings all the time. I might do a lot of practicing with the mute because it will probably just get on my nerves hearing these open strings Two of them and now we back. understand why our beginning students want to practice with the mute. <laughs> and we yes. say, no, you shouldn't do this. You should hear everything. And <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so no, those are basically my, my strategies. I'm going to take the hands apart. I'm going to uh, go several steps back so that I'm working in an area where I can already do something so that I can expand that because I found a lot of my difficulties was because I was trying too much at once, bow and fingers at yeah, once. Yeah, and the re yeah. only result of it was that I was frustrated and that I was tensing up. That was my mm. biggest problem. I was tensing oh, yeah. up all the time. Yeah. And what I want to do is I'm going to start with things I definitely can already do well enough yeah. that I can influence the quality of sound because that's what everything is about, the quality of sound. And yeah. just expand slowly from what I can already do, however long it takes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to document all this on your YouTube channel. And uh, the channel is Vivolin. And I'll also link to it underneath for uh, uh, the people who uh, want to follow your journey in this uh, left handed. And you're also going to, alongside it, develop because you're going to be the most empathic structured and uh, uh, what I want to say, patient teacher <laughs> <laughs> in the world, I guess, after this or during this already. Um, so so uh, can you tell a little bit about uh, what a, what a uh, project actually uh, is? It's more than just documenting your, your journey. It's also developing a, a curriculum. Yes, yes. It's a teaching method that I'm developing. Mm -hmm. It's called teaching myself from scratch. Because mm -hmm. I want to teach people to teach themselves. Yeah. Because even under ideal uh, circumstances, nobody has a violin lesson every day. So yeah. we have to teach ourselves because most of the yeah. time we spend with the instrument, we are alone. So this is yeah. about teaching people to teach themselves. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be using what I discover by 
playing the other way yeah. and by de further developing the methods which Ruggiero Ricci developed into something which is hopefully going to be helpful to people to learn to teach themselves. The first lesson is already out. You can find oh. the link in my in my YouTube videos. I will link to all of that. So uh. and, uh, and I'm working on the second lesson now. So yes, I'm going to be an empathic teacher, working yeah. on the patience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For yourself, uh, first of all, and uh, and I, I think also it's 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 kind of because we know we have to develop. Uh, some left hand skills apart from right hand skills, uh, whatever the right and left hand is. Um, and uh, but but now you discover that that really is the case that you really should take those steps uh, back and uh, or take those steps separately to be able to put everything together in a more fluent, relaxed and, and good way, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I'm noticing more than ever to rather go a step back so that what I can do, yeah. I'm doing relaxed because then I have uh, uh, something which I can build on because yeah. I was finding it unbelievably frustrating. But today when I was practicing left-handed, I, I noticed I was starting to enjoy it a little bit because I made it easy enough for myself yeah. that, that I could actually do it. Yeah, yeah, actually succeed something and, and yes. have also a win. Yes. Uh, and, and go further from that, I think. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very interesting. Maybe we can uh, uh, do another interview in a month. Yes. If, yes. And see I how it goes. I would love uh, to. So uh, if everyone would comment below if you want Vivian back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I do. And um, uh, are, there, are there other things you would like to share about this or things you have noticed? I think what's most interesting is the fact that I have no idea where this is going to go. Yeah. So like when I'm developing these lessons, which are going to be available, I don't know what the next lesson is going to be like. Yeah. I'm working on the second lesson right now, which kind of came after I did the first lesson, but I have no mm -hmm. idea what I'm going to focus on in the third lesson. So yeah. I have absolutely no idea how this is, where this is going and what I'm going to be doing next. This is what I decided mm -hmm. today to, to, to go back to yeah. really, really small steps, something really easy. But I don't know what that's going to be like next week. And I certainly have no idea what it's going to be like in a month. That's probably what makes it so interesting that it's yeah. something which is completely alive and developing as we go along. It's not something which I have ready in my head and just have yeah. to do, but it's something where I'm learning so much every day and I have no idea where it's going to take me. And I certainly don't know in what way it's going to take me there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also interesting because I think that, uh, of course, many methods are proven, but I think a lot of methods are also made like at a, at a desk in some way uh, of a teacher gathering different things and, and having first some kind of vision, kind of working top down. Yes. And you're actually working bottom up to see, yes. okay, this is what I'm encountering and this is what I see that, that, that works or doesn't work or the problem that I have. And from that, the method will develop into um, yes. something that will be helpful, I think. Yes, well, that is, that is basically what it is because I noticed that a lot of violent methods are still based in violent schools for children. Yeah. Not all of them, but a lot mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. And yeah. children learn so different from adults. And yes. Have, and yeah. adult beginners on the violin have difficulties which children don't have. Okay. So I want yeah. to address these difficulties. It's not supposed to be a replacement to any other methods. It's just supposed to be yeah. something which one can add to one's practicing which very specifically targets the physical difficulties that one has mm -hmm. as an adult beginner because yeah. that's what makes violin playing so difficult you have these unbelievable physical difficulties and lots of methods don't address them as effectively yeah. as they could 
Mm-hmm. So yep. that's what I'm hoping to develop. And by being basically my own guinea pig, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. tell immediately if something is helping or not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And because you are a, a guinea pig who already knows how to do it, you kind of know that it's not because you don't know it. Yes. It's all purely the, 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 the motor skill, the physical the aspects. Yes. I think. So, so it, it, it naturally filters it uh, out. Well, it's very interesting. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for sharing this. Um, and uh, I will link to it below. Of course, people who want to follow along this kind of life can, can kind of step in now with the first lesson and then uh, uh, be along with the adventure uh, with you. Um, that as, would be great. I would, yeah, I would love yeah. it for people oh. to join me, whether they want to try the other way around or whether they want yeah. to play the normal way. It would be great fun if people can yeah. join me because they can give me their feedback and yeah. one could have a whole whole learning group learning and yeah. working together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I can also imagine that because there are adult beginners and I sometimes see people after five years uh, who still ha- who might be playing a more advanced repertoire, who might be playing a Bach double concerto, but still have that uh, stiffness and still have that because I get that question a lot of uh, adult beginners who are still so stiff in and they get pr- trouble in uh, uh, the bow hand, the, the finger action, and uh, also vibrato, that kind of things that really require the natural fluent uh, motions yes. or speed, I think. For, for, yes. for speed in general, you also need some kind of relaxation and natural movement. So, um, yeah. well, this great. would work for uh, more intermediate players as well because it's so unconventional yeah. that the chances of yeah. them having practiced left hand pizzicato and yeah. double stops and glissando scales is rather unlikely. I haven't even yeah. tested yeah. vibrato yet. I think I'll try some vibrato the next time I make a video because yeah. I haven't even tried. Yeah. It hasn't even occurred to me to try to see if it's even possible. Yeah, yeah, that would be very interesting. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it also maybe makes you introduce sort of advanced techniques like left hand spiccato, uh, uh, left hand spiccato, left hand spiccato, of course, but left hand spiccato <laughs> way earlier uh, yes. than uh, than it's normally taught. Yes. That, that, uh, that, that, yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. And well, thanks uh, for having me. This was fun. <laughs> this was uh, this was uh, very fun. And uh, thanks all for watching. And uh, uh, see you all next time. So bye bye. Bye.